the game from Sony's PlayStation. I think I think it was released sometime early this year, a few months back. Yeah, a few months back. The game of Ghost of Tsushima. It's one of the few games that was highly successful, which is not divisive compared to the other game that was earlier launched, the last The Last of Us Part Two. So, if for those who haven't played the game, I highly suggest you check it out. It's very uh, somewhat action adventure stealth game. I won't say like Dark Souls type of game, but it's very action packed in terms of the different stances and being able to stealthily approach uh, and attack enemies in, in their you know, in their faces in their bases. So obviously, right now, Ghost of Tsushima is considered one of the top games in. Sony's PlayStation, uh, Sony's launch in history. So they rank among fourth. So meaning they're at par with uh, the Spider-Man, God of War, or even The Last of Us original Last of Us. So which says a lot about the game. Now obviously the publisher here is Sucker Punch. For those who are not familiar with Sucker Punch, they're the publisher of another game, a popular game, which I've actually played, uh, Infamous Second Son. So it's a totally different game from Ghost of Tsushima, but it's a very enjoyable game to play. So I highly check, uh, suggest you check it out. So right now it has done well in the United States. Not only that, in Japan it has really did well. It has become the biggest PS4 release for the console generation. So it says a lot, meaning beating out other games such as Spider-Man and even Uncharted or even Horizon Zero Dawn. And uh, let's take a look here. So you can see here, uh, the game of Ghost of Tsushima, for those who are not familiar, it's based on uh, on, on Japan, uh, the mythic of a samurai way back, uh, hundreds of years back. So the, your main weapon here is a sword. Uh, the main enemy here in the sto main story here is, uh, they were, uh, the island of Tsushima was invaded by the Mongols. Uh, a relative of Genghis Khan, or Kasi, I forgot which one. But anyway, so the plot here is centered around the main character of Jin Sakai. So I, I won't spoil the story here, but you know, I would suggest you go check it out. So it's a very uh, open world esque type of game, so it's interesting. Now for many gamers who had already finished the game, which says a lot in terms of you know how, how beautiful the game is, how interesting it is, now, obviously, if you're a gamer, you're looking for more content, there's good news, right? They're introducing a co-op game later on, but before that, so let me show you here. So in terms of ratings, you know, they have rave reviews, which is I want to focus on. If you take a look here in terms of Metacritic scores, uh, in terms of critic review, you can see it's highly rated around 83. On the other hand, if you see the user score, which is you know highly rated around 9.3, which I wanna discuss in detail because it's kind of ironic. How come for critic reviews they give a you know a good rating but not a great rating, meaning the hundred or so critics is saying that it's not a great game. But on the other hand, if you look at the 15,000 or so users, the actual people who played the game, who bought the game, gave them a very high rating. So I don't know, do you trust the critic reviews over the user or is it vice versa? I tend to lean more on the user rating because you know it's the actual people who actually play the game, which is kind of opposite if you compare this game to the most divisive game of the year, which is The Last of Us Part Two, where in the critic gave them a very high, I think around 93. Then on the other hand, the user score, they only gave them a me measly 5.6. So which tells you, you know, do you believe the critic reviews uh, online or should you believe the users who actually played it? Now, obviously, the game still did well in terms of sales, but in terms of review, you know, it's up for debate. It's the never ending story. Anyway, continuing. So as I mentioned earlier, so for those who have already finished uh, playing the game of Ghost of Tsushima, there's good news. So later this fall or as late as November, there'll be, you know, showing more content by providing an online component, a co-op component, which is kind of interesting. And 
they mentioned also in the article that it's going to be free. So you just have to download it if you have the game already. And not only that, there will be no microtransactions. So as many would have feared, you know, people are apprehensive in the, uh, what they call this, like how EA is trying to pray money out of our hands, not willingly, but in, in the case of Ghost of Tsushima, they have stated clearly there will be no microtransaction, which is a site of relief for many users who are, you know, focused on single player game, now multiplayer, they could enjoy the game to their heart's content. Now, in terms of the content of the online, they're call, calling it the Legends mode. So, let's take a look here. Let's see a short trailer here. So, it's to, slightly different from the concept of the Samurai uh, main story in the single player. So, this is what you normally see in the actual game. But later, you'll see a slight difference. Yeah. So they'll focus more on mythological Japanese mythology, okay? More on gods and demons of sorts. So I think more following similar to how Dark Souls is. So it would bring a different variety. So your enemy would be monsters, demons of sorts. So they have here different character sets. So similar how Dark Souls mentioned earlier. So you get to choose different characters here. Or different classes and then we'll see how it goes what type of co-op game will they provide okay now they mention here there's survival mode missions there's four classes I mentioned before so it will be interesting how this plays out so I can't wait to see uh, how this would turn out 